All right, so that's the last spark plug. Um, I've got the block already at the machine shop. Um, they told me about be about two weeks to get it uh, uh, cleaned and inspected. I ordered my some ARP studs, um, and then uh, I'll have them uh, align bore um, the block as long as everything looks good. Um, I'm still talking with, uh, I'm going to be talking with Butler tomorrow to make sure that the, the stroker kit that I'm buying is the right one. Uh, I'm going to try to use it with these number 16 heads. Um, I did some number crunching online. There's a couple calculators you can use. The, the, uh, what was it? Eagle, um, has a, uh, uh, stroker kit that has dished top pistons, um, 22 cc's go with dish pistons uh i should be should be pretty good to run on pump gas i, I will double check with butler on that see if they have any other suggestions there are a couple of kits out there that have different strokes there was one i saw i thought that said 4.21 uh, that was a flat top um, that would eliminate my need to have the the dish pistons there's there's a bunch of different options. I'll be talking to Butler to make sure uh, what's the best. I would like to use these, these heads if I could. Um, definitely going with a different intake. The intake I have, um, it's it's the spread bore, and I've got a new a newer style carburetor. Just doesn't work with that, um, and it would help eliminate a little bit of weight. I'm going to be keeping these heads, so if I can save some weight uh, in another area, uh, that would be awesome. All right, so I'm gonna go about now. Um, I'm gonna pull off these uh, these brackets here. Um, I don't know if I can get these studs on this. Um, just the 1.5. I'm not gonna go with a roller rocker cam, um, but these weaker Pontiac uh, ones where they taper down. Um, I'm probably gonna change these. These have been you know used in use for 50 years, so um, it's. It's not going to hurt to change them, uh, and definitely I want to go to something uh, something that's going to hold up. I'm not going crazy horsepower, but why, if I'm going to have it apart, why take the chance? screwed around with this tool I bought um, I still don't know that I got it right but it did get my it did get my first valve spring out uh, imagine most of this stuff gets replaced um, the seal on that one was absolutely a rock um, I'll show you how I'm gonna take this one out now got this removal tool I got the large one make life a little easier I did take a hammer and tap all the valves it's not like this thing wasn't in a car recently but it says it recommends to tap to tap the tops just tap them all make sure that they're uh, they're loose and as soon as I got a little bit of tension on this um, it popped right loose so I was able to go in and get the retainer out so I got the retainer out loosen this back up and then she she came right out. I'll be honest, there's a handle on this damn thing. I don't even know if I put it together right. But the tightening bolt that I'm turning right now does its job. And uh, you'll hear it in a minute. She's just going to pop loose. She'll push her down. I had the handle on this thing in the wrong spot again there were no instructions in one picture 
and you had to disassemble it to put it together. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys. That's what you get for buying a cheap auto store spring compressor, I guess. Did it great on the first one. Come on. There we go. So once that pops up like that, this thing is still holding the spring. Should be able to get these retainers out of here very carefully. Gonna obviously use new ones. I'll crank her down a little bit more. Retainers should just pop right out of there now. Little half moons, yeah, see that? Little half moon. Other side should pop out now. Come on. You just gotta get over. Just gotta pull it off. There we go. So now I can release the tension on the spring holder, uh, obviously slowly. So off camera, I went ahead and CC'd um, one of the uh, chambers with valves in it before I took it out. It says it's a number 16 head, which should be 72 cc chambers. And I was able to get 24 3 cc squirts in it with a little dropper that I have for medicine for the grandkids. So... As accurate as my measurement was, it was, I was pretty darn close. I was pretty happy with it. I just wanted to verify that the head was what it says it was. I've done a few of these now. Um, I got the pressure on here. I got it to the point where it's starting to get like, mm, like I know I'm far enough. Just give us a little tap. Listen. Bam. She pops loose. Um, because the retainers are kind of bound in there. And there's just two little half moons come right out they look like you can see it but they look like that little little half rounds let me see it better without my gloved hand little half rounds and they're just wedged in there kind of tapered and uh, they go in on top of this cap now that I have that I figured out how this whole handle works there's a handle here on the top this handle here now if I pull this that'll release a bunch of the tension and then I can work this loose. Took me a little bit to figure out how to do this. I haven't done this work since this type of work since high school. And our we actually had an automotive shop that had a really, really good uh, we had a valve grinder, we had everything in there. And uh, I'm a machinist by trade, but I mostly make medical parts. Um did million for about 10 years, did um, CNC Swiss for about 10 years, and now I'm actually a supervisor over um, medical device manufacturing. So as you can imagine, our parts are considerably smaller uh, than uh, the one I'm working with here. Okay, so this valve has a, there's supposed to be a valve guide seal on here. This one's mostly broke off. Um, I've been able to... Uh, just pop them off just really carefully with a screwdriver, not the scratch. They are so brittle. They're supposed to be a little rubber piece. But yeah, they are brittle as can be. And then the valve will come out. I'm putting the valves in order on another, uh, uh, on a cardboard box over here behind me. So when I get done, they'll match up. Depending on what I have the machine shop do to these, um, not quite sure. I'm going to look up uh, if I want to keep these original rocker studs or not. I'm going to go with, with regular rockers, but I've heard stories of those things breaking, but I think that's mostly with uh, roller rockers. So we'll see. I'm not going to change my ratio. I'm going to stick with 1.5. Um, 
if I do something crazy and go to 1.65 or something like that, um, then I'll probably have to upgrade. But I might upgrade these just because they're so old. Okay, here we go. And that's why you should wear your safety glasses because those, those things just went flying. Pull the handle back, let the pressure off. This baby out of here. And I almost got this. This is the last one. This is the end of this head. And I can go on to the other head. This is the one from the driver's side, I think. Or no, this passenger side, I'm sorry. I was really surprised to see that these had double springs from the factory. Or at least someone put double springs in them at some point. So that one, the ring was gone completely. All right, so starting on the second head. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but there's supposed to be this, this, uh, there's supposed to be like the support cap, a shroud. And this first one doesn't have one. Oh my gosh, I never noticed that before. So who knows what was going on with this engine. I'm just going to flick them out of there. Loosen this up. Yeah, that whole piece is missing. This whole piece right here is missing. All right, next. Oh, I never took the other valve out. Anyway, no big deal. So yeah, this little cap, this washer here sits on top of that cap. And that kind of shrouds and pushes the whole spring down. This was a double spring for for whatever reason. Maybe it's because they were performance heads at one point, you know, number 16 or consider performance. If I did this all the time, I definitely would have bought a different spring compressor. But this one works. I'm glad I noticed that. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna. Be putting new valves in? I don't know. Hard to say. Always good to take stuff apart in order. That way if you have a question later, you can always go back and look at something. Even if you're not going to reuse it, at least you can take a look at it and maybe see if something looked uh, overly worn. All right, now that I got the rod guides out of there, okay, let's keep plugging away at her here. <laughs> OK. 
case you're wondering, so this foot goes on the top of the valve spring and the part that's pressing from the other side actually goes right on the valve head. Um, this presses right on the valve, so obviously it just pushes it right down on the seat, no big deal. Come on, baby, pop loose. Come on, come on, come on. Good to go. Can't believe how much I struggled with the first couple. Part of it was not knowing how this tool worked. Definitely part of it. This doesn't have a seal on it at all. Gone completely. Pull it right out. Yes, I was blowing blue smoke behind me going down the highway. <laughs> I had a couple guys went on a cruise with me. They didn't want to follow behind me. I wonder why. It was pretty good at lower RPMs. Once I got over about 3,200, or if I hammered down on it really hard, oh my gosh, I could really blow some smoke out the exhaust. And it was all from these, the valve guides being shot. And you can see it in the carbon buildup in the, uh, in the, in the head. You can see where that was just flying right out. Did I miss one? Oh my gosh, I skipped over. Yeah, I skipped over this one. Oh, getting tired. Not even that late. Get a better view now that I'm getting a better hang of this. Put that foot right on there. Run this pad down in the back, it goes right in the middle of the valve, and just tightens down. There's a little adjustment on this one here that helps it cup this um, to the size because I'm sure there's multiple, many, many different sizes of valve springs. And then just give it a little tap once I get a good enough pressure on it. A little bit more because I don't think you know, those will fall out yet. There we go. Let's uh, Half moons right out of there. Pull my lever back so she loosens up. Just holding that up there so that I can get my press compressor out here a little easier. There's no, no other reason to hold it up. Again, I don't know if you, oh, well, <laughs> it just fell right off. There's, there's two grooves. The top groove is for the retainer and the bottom groove is for the valve guide seal. And I just touched it and it fell apart. All right, next. And you can see this one here, it's already loose. She's just compressing right down. 
I could feel it as I was cranking too. That's how I knew. All you gotta do is compress it down far enough that those little those little retainers will fall out of there. That's it. Take your compressor off. And then, uh, let's see if I can show you that little retainer on here. This little black guy here, and she's hard as a rock. So I've been just fairly carefully pressing on the top of the valve, the valve cover lip and just kind of pushing it. And <laughs> they just shatter. Then normally they just press on there. I'll probably use a different type of seal next time. Probably going to put in hardened seats. Really don't feel like rebuilding this engine. And again, anytime in the near future. So I'm going to do some preventive measures. Put in some hardened valve seats, some hardened valve guides. Um, things like that that'll help with the street the entire street ability of the engine that one must be compressing no, maybe it's not. um there we go there we go pop them little half rounds out of there i'm being careful not to not to scratch the valve stem again i might end up not using these again i'm not sure but Gonna be careful. There we go. Here. Oh yeah. Bye bye. Valve guide seal. And that's it. She's uh, she's all disassembled. Um, probably take it in, have it cleaned, uh, have it hot tanked. Um, the other one, I was playing around a little bit with a razor blade. I don't even know where my razor blade went. Um, and she's just, she's a mess. Uh, there's so much buildup and crud in here um, some of the passageways are blocked uh, again I was pretty sure this engine spent some time in a salvage yard so it explains why I had the gunk going through my coolant system I don't know if you can see this here oh boy. look at look at that right there that's the type of stuff I'm dealing with so hopefully Hopefully when all said and done, um, she'll turn out okay. Um, I'm going to try to salvage it. I'm not on a super tight budget, but I definitely like to keep some things original. And these number 16 heads are actually pretty good heads. Again, they're the small, small chamber. It gives you high compression. But I'm hoping after talking to Butler that we can come up with a solution for that because I would love to keep these heads. They're very, very desirable heads to have. Um, I didn't have any problems with them other than the, the oil leaks in the with the valve guides. Um, but other than that, they should clean up real good and, and work really well. I think I'm going to get some Ram Air uh, 3 reproductions for my exhaust. Uh, Ram Air 3 header reproductions uh, for my exhaust ports um, that should help with the uh, with the flow I'm going with a different intake I pretty much determined that already um, but I want to keep I want to keep these heads if I can um, I think the engine will be very happy with a stroker kit and uh, these heads cleaned up I think it'll work they'll work really really nice um, so anyway um, that's all there is pretty much to getting the val uh, valves out, um, the valve spring 
tool. I fought with that a little bit, finally figured it out. Um, probably just like I say, I haven't, I've never, I haven't worked on stuff like that in oh, almost 30 years. No, over 30 years. Uh, 16, 17 playing with this stuff in high school. And of course, that was all supervised by our, uh, by our shop teachers. So, um, never really did that stuff with my dad. Um, we worked on cars, but we really never took the engines actually apart. We would replace engines, but we never actually tore the engines apart. So anyway, um, if you like what you like what you're seeing, want to keep following along, like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Uh, help me help my channel get started out. I'm just getting going here, and uh, I'll look for the next video. Um, it could be on this. It could be. Um, who knows what it'll be me doing. <laughs> I do a lot of stuff around my house, uh, repairs, and some of the stuff I film. And so I thought uh, people would like to, like to see different things going on because uh, maybe sometimes that's something you can, uh, you can do yourself. So thank you very much. Have a great day. See you next time.